is all about how to get your SAM.gov registration all completed because like the seasons, SAM.gov is constantly changing. So I'm going to take you through all the steps necessary to get your UEI. Let's begin. So once you reach SAM.gov, you will see this screen right here. You're going to need to sign in. If you are a returning user, simply enter in your email and password. If you are brand new, you're going to need to create an account. Simply click the button here, follow the prompt. It's going to ask you a few questions. And before you know it, you will have a username and password. It will also ask you to either use a security code, a text message, some type of third party verification because this platform holds your bank account information. So you don't want just anyone to have access to your SAM.gov registration. Okay, so I'm gonna log in. You see, I'm logged in. While I already have four companies registered in SAM.gov, we are going to start from scratch because I have a nonprofit that I would like to register. When I was an undergrad, I was able to attend a very expensive private school due to a foundation. And I had the opportunity to meet the woman who was behind the foundation. And I'll never ever forget the look in her eyes and just how she was so grateful to meet us. And I, I just could tell she was so not only grateful, but felt so accomplished and to be able to see the benefits of, I guess, her hard work. I don't know much about her, but she had enough money to help yours truly get through a very expensive private school. And I said to myself, I want to be able to do the same thing for others. I want to be able to offer scholarships. I want to offer so many other things to people out there because she was able to do that for me. So I created a foundation. So we're going to register it because guess what? You can register for profit as well as nonprofit companies in SAM. Create new entity directly with the US government. Bid on federal opportunities. If you're looking to apply for loans, by all means, it's best if you just click been on a federal opportunity because you're letting them know. I don't know why they added all of these options. I have no idea. If you want to prime a government contract, meaning the contract is in your name, the money goes to your bank account, you are the prime contractor, follow these prompts. Select federal government. There's no reason to add in all this other information. There isn't whatsoever. Maybe they're collecting it for some purpose, there's no reason to put all of this in there. If you really want to, by all means do so. But at the end of the day, you just need a UEI, a unique entity identifier and a cage code. That's it. Next. Okay. So you see that they even prompted you choose all awards. That's what you want. All awards. The other thing, you will have to update this every single year. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to go through a very similar process. So make sure you have the basics, a physical address, tax ID form issued by the IRS, as well as something that shows your physical address if it's not stated on your tax ID. You must have these things. If you do not have a physical address, then stop, do not proceed. I mean, it'd be great if you watch this video till the end for the algorithm, but you don't wanna go through a bunch of issues of being rejected and you try to update it and seven months later, you're in the same situation. I don't want that, y'all are GovCon winners. So make sure you have the form issued by the IRS, a physical address, and if for some reason, the address on the form issued by the IRS with your tax ID differs, make sure you have something that lists your business name and your physical address. It could be a lease, it could be a bank statement, it could be a light bill. 
You just need something. Are you registering a government entity? For pretty much every single one of you watching this, y'all, nah, we ain't no government entity. <laughs> no, you're not a government entity. But if you are, then select yes, because government entities can also bid on work with the federal government. That's why they ask these questions. I know sometimes it can be a pain, it can be very frustrating, it can be very aggravating, especially since they made all these changes since my last video. But stick with me, you will have your cage code before you know it. Yes, physically located. If you are outside of the United States, feel free to select this because you can still register as a government contractor, even if you are located outside of the United States. You just have to go through different steps. Do you already have a cage code? No. Most of you, you, you probably won't have one. If for some reason you already have one, then please make sure you write in the comments so we can address that. Otherwise, you're going through this process to get a UEI and to obtain a cage code. And they're just giving you information so that you are prepared. They just want to help you out. That's why you have all of these prompts. You have all of these guides. If you want to download them, by all means. This is where you take a look at the form issued by the IRS. You must enter the information for your company exactly as it appears on this form. So that's why I have it in my hand. Kizzy Foundation Inc. There's no DBA right now. United States. And then I'm gonna enter in my address. And then you click next. On this screen, they are prompting you to let you know that they are about to validate your entity, meaning they're going to run the information that you provided through a huge database to make sure it shows up. Here's a Kizzy strategy. If you just registered your business within the last 30 days, chances are it may not show up. If your business is in let's say a physical location, but there are multiple offices there with similar address, just be aware, it may not show up. It's okay, I'm gonna get you through it regardless. You click yes, you can provide the required information. So now they're searching millions of records and they're gonna ask you, do any of these match? There we go, this is it. If it didn't match, you just select, I don't recognize my entity on this list, and it'll walk you through the prompts. That's all you have to do. Because what will happen is they're going to ask you for information. That's why it's important to have your documents. You're gonna have to upload them, and someone behind the scenes, kind of like in The Wizard of Oz, they're going to need to add your entity to the database which adds a little time. So just be patient, everyone. That's all, just be patient. So I recognize it, scroll down here, bam. And you can see Foundation Research Institute Nonprofit because it's a foundation, it's a nonprofit. This is spot on. Are all of your entity details correct? No, it is missing the office unit. And under no, it says suite number is missing, ink is missing, address is old, doing business as is missing. If any of that applies, just simply click no. Then they're asking you, which one do you need to update? Physical address. So I typed it in one more time. It's stating this is what you entered. They're asking you to confirm it. Now, they need proof, right? We live in a culture of 
needing receipts, gotta have those receipts. This is where you enter your receipts. So I have my form from the IRS, which actually lists both the address and the foundation name, which is awesome because when I established my flagship company, it was back in 2008 and I used my apartment. So anytime I update my flagship company, I always have to submit two documents, the lease and the form issued by the IRS. The form that I'm uploading was mailed to me by my attorney. I just simply took a photo of it, converted it to a PDF. There are a ton of scanning apps that you can use that will convert an image automatically to a PDF. Whichever method that you use, it doesn't matter. What's important is that you can read the document and you have electronic copy of the document. So now it's time to submit it. If you want to provide details by all means, I'm going to move on. There we go. First part is done. Can you believe it? I feel like confetti should be falling down. <laughs> and it says your entity documentation was submitted. This is the reference number that I received. Sam will review contact you if you have any questions so you just sit back set it and forget it this is when you just relax that's all you got to do if you want to go back to your workspace you're more than welcome to do that and what you can do is then see your status it says pending id assignment in comparison to my flagship company you see i have a uei and you see that I already have a cage code. So once you finish the second step, your workspace will look exactly like this. All my amazing GovCon winners, stick with it. Part two is coming up soon. Please join my Facebook group. Get on my wait list at govconwinners.com. And don't forget, everything is possible, y'all.